morning. Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. In the first episode I uh, talked about the fact that Quail is a family name. It's my middle name and it was my grandmother's grandmother's last name. So I thought I'd show you a little family heirloom. This is a what we call a sugar shell. It's a fancy spoon and you probably can't see it but at the top here it's engraved and it says REQ which stands for Ruth Elizabeth Quayle who was my grandmother's grandmother my great-great-grandmother little trivia for you there hold on I just dropped my paper <laughs> Okay, so I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is a sweater called Greta by Elspeth LeVold. pattern is in a book of hers. It's called Book 12, The Walk in the Park Collection. I don't have this book, and I saw this picture <clears throat> on, I think on Ravelry, and I really wanted to make it. So I sent out some feelers amongst my friends and discovered that one of them had the book, so she lent it to me. <clears throat> so I did, of course, make a couple modifications the, um, I added some waist shaping here just to draw it in a little bit. You can't really see it or notice it, but it makes it less bulky here. I added some short rows in the back, and you can see it looks like it was just enough so that it brings it down so that it makes it even. If I had not added them, it would have like come up a little in the back, but I like it like that. I added the short rows at the bottom and then I added a couple more up in the upper back too. I do have a little bit of a, it's not too noticeable right now, but I do have a little bit of a rounded back, so that takes care of that. Also the neck was lower and I was afraid that it would be too low for what I'm comfortable wearing, so I raised the neck a little bit. I love the way it turned out, it was accidentally perfect. <laughs> uh, the sleeves, the, it, the whole sweater was worked bottom up, including the sleeves, but after I did the bottom up and put the shoulders together, I decided I picked up the sleeves at the top and worked them down to the cuff. I did do them flat and ended up seaming them because my, like many knitters, my gauge in the round is different than my gauge flat and I had done the front and the back flat so I wanted I didn't want to mess with the gauge <clears throat> and kept the sleeves flat also so it has seams and this nice little cable detail I forgot to look up when I made it I'm not sure how long ago <laughs> and the yarn is I thought it was discontinued because I'd never heard of it before. It was yarn that I found in a thrift shop, actually. It's called Pattern Iron, 100% wool. But I just checked, and it looks like it's still available somewhere. When I first was working with it, it was a little bit splitty. And I had read that it was recommended for, like, rugs or other, like, non-clothing items. But... I'm really happy with it, the way it turned out, and this sweater is one of my older sweaters, and it is not pilling at all. Like, I've never seen, seen a single pill on this sweater, and it wears, it, I mean, it looks brand new. I just love it. Okay, so in my last episode, I talked about this the Sakuft sweater that I had made. And a viewer asked me to explain a little bit more about the steaking and cutting the cuff. 
So I'll put a picture up here, I hope, to show you what the sleeves looked like. They were knitted each in a tube separately, and then near the top they were joined, and each sleeve was worked together in one giant round here for the color work portion at the top. And in the middle, where the join was, was the steek. And it was like a, um, maybe seven stitches of checkerboard that went up. You'll see it in the picture. So those were stitches that were intentionally cast on to join the one sleeve to the other sleeve to knit it in the round. And then those steeks stitches were where I cut it to separate the sweaters, the sleeves, after they were done. And you don't see the checkerboard pattern in the sweater at all because they get folded to the back when you sew it all together. Let me turn this inside out and you can see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so when I did my steek, I stabilized it with the bright red yarn and you can see that here. And the steek stitches are pretty much obliterated because I, sta I stabilized them with the crochet steek. And then whatever was extra on the edge, I just clipped off to get rid of the extra bulk. And then I did a whip stitch over top of the edge to hold it down. So that's what it looks like on the back after it's been cut and then sewed together with the body of the sweater. I stabilized it with the bright red yarn to help me see what I was doing since this was my very first steak. It just made it a little bit easier. And on the front side you don't see that at all so it doesn't matter. Now for the cuffs, you'll see in the picture that I originally had a completely different cuff on here. And I was not happy with it for two reasons. One, it was too long. And number two, it was a really bulky, wide cuff. And it bothered me to wear it. And I ended up not wearing the sweater at all. So I decided maybe if I redo the sleeves, I'll actually like the sweater and I'll wear it. <clears throat> Which turned out to be the case. So here, I'm going to insert hopefully a little video to show you how I cut the sweater, removed the old cuff, and then picked up the stitches to knit the new cuff top down. Okay, let's pretend that this is the cuff of a sweater. Now if you're working top down and you had bound off at the cuff, you could just undo your bind off and rip it back and then redo your cuff. But if you've done it bottom up like I did on my sweater then you can't do that. <clears throat> you can't take like you could you could take out the cast on roll but you wouldn't be able to rip it back through the ribbing it just doesn't work. So what I did was I just cut one strand. Can you see that? Cut one strand. Snip! Okay, now you have a hole. And then you just pick it out. halfway done here. Continue. I'm going to uh, snip these ends to make them shorter to make it easier to pick them out. And then just keep going around the other side. Okay, we're almost there. A little bit more to go. And then 
Now I have two pieces where I used to have one. So I get rid of the piece I don't want anymore. And then you can see there are little loops freed up. So I just get my needles and I stick the loops on the needles. Okay, so I'll start here where the end is. Just go like this all the way around, putting the loops onto the needle. So now I have them all back on the needle and there's likely to be some that are messed up or wrong. So before I start knitting, I'll just slip around and make sure they're all right. That they're on the needle correctly, that there's no splits. The Let's see, here's one that's dropped down a row, so we'll fix that one. So I'll just slip around and make sure that they're all on the needle the right way. And then, right there where my tail is, I can pick up, start knitting again, and rework the cuff of my sweater. Ta-da! Okay. I was working on the Arn and Carla's Mystery Knit Along. I did continue it a little bit. I made another square or two, two squares I think, and then I realized I was running around, running out of my contrast color. So here's the first one. This one is called uh, Eight Leaf Rose. I've been using, oh here I'll show you the second one. This one is called Bird Song. It's four birds. So I've been alternating green and blue using white as the contrast color, but I'm running out of the white. And because all of my squares so far are this green and blue, I really don't want to start now with new squares with new colors. Originally they were saying use all different colors all the time and, and um, but I had all this green and blue to use, so I thought, oh, I'll just use the green and blue. But now I'm running out of the white. So I did, oh, there's one more that I did this week. Potentilla, or Potentilla, not sure how to say it. It's probably another flower. I'm not familiar with it. I did three out of the five blocks this week. And I have enough for maybe one or two. So I'm kind of waiting to see what the blocks are next week to decide which ones I'll use my the last of my white yarn on. I wanted to talk a little bit about their edges. Now Arna, if you can see, it's kind of every other stitch is white on the edge. So what he does is you, when you knit across, the very last stitch you knit with both colors together to anchor your contrast color on the edge. And then you do the same thing on the back side. You purl it across and on the very last stitch you purl both colors together. So the white you can see on the back goes all the way to the edges whereas on the front it's bordered by the darker color. Another thing that they do is they iron their knitting. When I was, I mentioned I was taking the Knitting Guild Masterclass and in their blocking portion, they talk about steaming with an iron where you, you put a towel over your knitting and then you hold the iron over your knitting and then you steam it. But you don't actually press on the knitting. But Arna, he puts the iron, well he has the wet towel on top of it, but then he puts the iron right on it. And I was like aghast. I'm like, isn't he going to kill his knitting if he does that? So I thought since I have these swatches, 
it would be a good, good opportunity to try that and see how it works. So all of these swatches I have ironed. Now there's good and bad. So the good part is it actually does a really nice job blocking the knitting. If you have any problems with tension when you're stranding, the ironing really evens it out. It's awesome. It's like magic. However, it also kind of flattens it. It does. You know, when you knit, your, your uh, fabric has like body to it. But when you iron it, it kind of, it makes it, I don't know if you would call it lifeless because it depends what you're looking for in a fabric, but it definitely flattens it and it gives it a whole lot more drape. I mean, look how next episode, if I maybe, if I have one, I'll show you what it looks like before blocking, but before blocking, basically it's all curled up like this and it's very stiff. And then after blocking, it's magically flat and very, very drapey. So if that's the kind of fabric you like, that's what you get. I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm tempted to try it on one of my Colorwork sweaters, but I don't know. <laughs> so my question for you today is, do you iron your knitting? Or how do you block your knits? Let me know in the comments below. Stay tuned. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.